take a look at the Corsair Vengeance M65 FPS Gaming Mouse. All right, now this is very similar to the M60. The M60 had the exact same chassis. It's a solid aluminum body, and then they just put this mouse on top of it, built it all here. Uh, it comes in three different colors. We've got the white and the gunmetal, and then we also have the uh, black. I believe it's called the black, or the... They've probably got some name for it. I'm, I'm sorry, I do not know. This mouse features the Avago ADNS 9800 sensor. The M60 had the ADNS uh, 90, 9500, yes. So this one will go all the way up to 8200 DPI slash CPI, whatever you want to call it. You can go in the software and change the lift distance based upon the surface that you're using. And uh, you can also even click on, uh, you know, like detect quality of the surface, move the mouse around for a little bit, and it'll detect the quality of the surface that you're using. Um, the uh, polling rates, it'll do uh, 1000 hertz, it'll do 500 hertz, 250 hertz, and 125 hertz. And on this unit, we have eight programmable buttons. So let's take a look at all those. Now on the top, of course, we have left and right click. And then we have the scroll wheel. The scroll wheel is uh, metal and it's got a rubber, rubberized texture on the top. It's, it's actually nice and clicky. It's got a chunky click to it. Or just behind that, we have our up and down button for our three DPI sensitivity levels. And there's also a corresponding LED. You can turn off the LEDs in the, uh, the software once you get the software installed. But I want to note that the LEDs corresponding just to that always stay on to let you know which DPI setting you're on. So on the side, we have a large red sniper button. It's right where your thumb's going to go. Now, if you hold that down, you can set a different DPI setting in the software. And while that's being held down, it changes your DPI. So you get someone in your scope and you want maybe more precision. So you hold that button down, it changes your DPI to whatever you've selected. And then you can snipe to your heart's content. Just above that, we also have two other thumb buttons, like almost like a forward and back button. You can remap all the buttons on this to be anything you like. Let's talk about the body itself. As far as comfort goes, it's very lightweight and uh, you also have three uh, weights on the bottom. You just unscrew them and you can adjust it to make it just the right weight for you. I kind of, um, I, I like it almost with, with no weights. I like it. it it's got a nice glide to it because the polyethylene fluoroethylene feet make it nice and you know easy to glide on. Also the solid aluminum body is really, has a really nice weight to it. And I also want to note that the, uh, the mouse cord in the front or the cord in the front here, it's a braided cable. It's, it's off-centered. It's on the left front side of the mouse there. And um, it, it doesn't really change much for me. I didn't notice a difference compared to the different mice that have it in the middle. So now this does have a textured surface um, on the top. It's like a rubberized coating. It's very comfortable. And on the, uh, the sides of the mouse, the grip has um, like a rough texture. So your hands don't slip around, especially if you're someone that sweats. Uh, in the back, it's kind of tapered and it, and it falls off quickly. It's like a really harsh angle going down in the back. Now, for me, I'm kind of somewhere in between claw grip and uh, palm grip, and it's, it's really comfortable. My hands do notice the creases in the side. It's not, there's, there are some mice out there that are just one big piece on the top. Um, this one, uh, you know, I let Wendell have it, and he was like immediately loved it. He was like, this is extremely comfortable. So I'm somewhere in the middle as far as comfort goes. I would have to use it a little bit longer, uh, and then I let Pistol use it, and you didn't think it was very comfortable, right? No. So... Yeah, she's used to a larger mouse with a ring finger rest. So throughout everyone here in the office, it sort of ran the gamut. I thought it was somewhat comfortable. Wendell thought it was extremely comfortable, and Pistol thought it was, like, not so comfortable. It's going to be, you know, different. If you've used the M60 and you love it and you just want a little bit, I guess, a slightly better sensor, the 9500 is a very good sensor. The 9800 is also a really good sensor, and all the problems that plagued the 9800 when it first came out, like some of the um, acceleration issues, all that's gone. So we don't have to worry about any of that anymore. It's just a really high sensitivity mouse. The other thing that people are going to say is like, who needs 8200 DPI? That's a ridiculous, you know, uh, that's ridiculous. Well, you don't have to use it. You can turn it down to 3200 or 4000 or whatever you want. It's there if you need it. But the ADNS 9800 is an extremely accurate sensor. So just keep that in mind. If you just want a lot of accuracy, it's a good way to go. The switches on this are all rated for 20 million clicks. So like I just said, it's um, got a lot of really good parts in it. Um, one more thing I want to say, I'm not going to get into the software. In this video, you do need to update the firmware before you can use the latest version of the software. Uh, and in the software, you can, of course, record macros and, and, and create some profiles. There's hardware and software mode, and when you're in hardware mode, all the profiles are pulled from the unit in software mode. Uh, you're able to set multiple profiles in your software, and then as you change from one program to the other, you can even associate those profiles with the EXE files, and that way, whenever you load up a certain game, it'll load up the profile that corresponds with that. However, most of us just use one profile, and that's why hardware is good, because you can have the hardware profiles stored on the mouse. There's, you know, 
there's actually some storage on here. So if you go from computer one computer to another, all your profiles are right there inside the mouse. That's where they live, you know. I do want to note that I've never accidentally clicked the sniper button. Wendell's one comment on the sniper button was that sometimes when he hits the sniper button, he accidentally moves the mouse a little bit. And if you're you know, using high sensitivity uh, setting, that can move you around a little bit. So you'll have to make sure you have a nice grip on this when you're hitting the sniper button uh, to make sure that you don't accidentally press the sniper button and then move the mouse. But, you know, there shouldn't be any problem with that if you're used to this sort of thing or if you're going to use it. If, if you do have problems like that, you can always map it to nothing or whatever. I mean, you can map these to anything. You can even map them to keystrokes on your computer. So macros, whatever you want. So all in all, it's a really good mouse. I love the aluminum uh, chassis. It's really nice. I mean, it's just completely solid. Nice glide, nice coating, and uh, nice sensor, so nice mouse. If you want further control, there's a sniper button on the on the left hand side. I, I'm going into David Attenborough documentary style. Over here we see the sniper button. Polyketal fluoroethylene.